Let me tell you, I love data tables. Data tables are amazing to use in a variety of different games. And I have a project open here, and I'll show you how I use data tables in that after I explain the basics of how they work in an empty project. So first things first, before you go into data tables, you will need to know how to make a structure. It's fairly simple. I have a separate video on the topic. If you don't know what structures are, how they work, or how to make them, you can try to figure it out on your own. Or you can go watch that video, both of which perfectly fine. After you've made a structure, though, you can go into miscellaneous and create a data table. And there we have to pick a row structure. So this has a bunch of, by default, included structures that you can use for data tables, as well as all of the structures that you have personally made in your project. As you can see, we have the item option here, which is a structure that I have made. So let's go with that. And let's call this item data table. And this is specifically where things like data tables are very useful because you can have all of the items in your game all listed in this data table. So let's make a couple of rows. So a couple of entries into this data table and just pick the first row here. And there we have the entry for every kind of variable that our structure holds. So if you go back to our structure here, we can see we made an image, an item ID, a value, a name, and a description. All of those are present here for us to edit, as well as a row name. If you're working with data tables in your Blueprint or even C++, the way you're going to be finding these rows is through their name. Usually, anyway, you can find them through the actual data inside them, but you'll have to make your own functions for that. Unreal offers you the option to just find a row by name. So let's call this first one something like sword, and let's also make a shield and a hammer and maybe a potion or something like that then every single one of these we can give an image which i don't have images for those things right now so i'm just going to put in random textures which is always a good idea then we can give them item ids if you have a system that works off of item ids we can have uh, this be zero and this be one and two and so on and so forth give them all a value so we can say the sword is wood 100, and then maybe the shield is wood a little bit less at 80. The hammer, uh, if we assume that we're talking about a war hammer, maybe it does a little bit more damage than the sword, so let's make that 150. And then the potion, uh, maybe we sell them for 25 or something. Do be aware, I do have a name variable here. That way we're not actually forced to use the same name between the row and the actual item. If you want to, for whatever reason, categorize things differently for you as a designer and programmer than the actual player will get to see. That's always a nice option to have. And then the description, uh, we can just type in something like, it's very sharp on the potion, apparently. Uh, we want to do that on the sword, of course. <laughs> anyway, I guess you kind of get the point of these data tables now. So I'll show you how to actually get the information out of a data table to use in your game. So let's make a quick temporary actor here, um, just to show you, because we can use a node called get row, get data table row is what it's called. And there you can select a data table asset. I only have one in this project, so it only comes up with a one. And then the row name you can see changes to a drop down menu from the text field that it was before, because you can just pick whichever item from the data table that you want this way. And then the out row, we can split and we can see it has all of the information that we put into our item structure. Now, of course, the name going into here still is a pin, which uh, you can put any name variable into as well. So you can make this much more dynamic. Just be aware that if you put in a name into here, which doesn't exactly match one of the row names, uh, you're going to output through row not found rather than row found here. I should mention one very important thing about data tables. It's a mistake that I personally made when thinking of a system for my own game, and that is that data tables are read-only assets. You cannot write to a data table. So what you can't do is get this row and then change information about it in Blueprint or even in C++ for that matter. These things are designed to be read from, not written to which to a certain extent does limit their functionality. But let's go back to that other project from the start of the video. 
and show you some of the functionality that I use it for in there. Because there's some pretty cool stuff in there. Because everything we see here is more or less driven by data tables. Let's go through the game. The game is a tycoon game in which you're supposed to go bankrupt rather than being successful. And the way you do that is by getting these very bad investments like square wheels, um, taking out loans that doesn't have anything to do with data tables for the time being, and getting very bad employees, such as Abigail Lee over here, which is a party animal, a social media addict, also reliable, to be fair, uh, but also insubordinate. So that's not a very good employee, so we're going to have to hire them. Both the employees and the investments are entirely driven by data tables. So let's take a quick look at how that works. I have a number of different data tables here. Uh, let's go into the investment data table. And there we can see I didn't even bother giving these things names because I'm not really using their names. I'm just picking a random entry out of this list every single time. It has the image that it displays on that card that we just saw. And it has a net loss or profit per second and an initial buy cost. So this is a structure that I made, and then I made a data table out of that. And every single time we generate a set of investments, which is done inside of this UI somewhere, I believe, I have a generate investment event here, which calls the generate investment function, which I made in C++, puts it into a investment structure, and then sets the name and the image of the buttons to match whatever I put into that investment and for the employees we have something very similar i have a generate hires which uses the generate employee function again a c++ function that i have made i calculate their uh, net profitability so that i only have to calculate that once based on the traits that they have i save that in a structure variable and then i set the text on the buttons to show the traits that they have as well as a randomly generated name and those traits also come from a data table. So I have a bunch of different traits here, all with a positive or negative value for their total profitability. And I have a list of 30 first names, which is then mixed with 30 last names to make a possibility of a total of 900 names to be generated randomly for every single employee every time we get a new hire possibility. So as you can see, data tables are a very good way to store a lot of information that you want to look up throughout your game. Whether that be your entire index of items, something like a place to just put down a bunch of names for a random name generator like I have. And a very big thank you to all of my patrons. you can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.